You may think that this is easy and you may think that we're tripping and, and bugging and we're a bunch of babies, but this <laughs> is no joke. Hey, hi, howdy. I have one question for you. What are you afraid of? Back when I was a young child, I remember seeing a television show when I probably shouldn't have been watching it, but I was exposed to a lot of really horrible horror back when I was younger. That's probably why I'm so messed up now. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what this show was called, and it felt like no one on planet Earth knew what this show was. All I remember was that there was a group of people who went to haunted places and uh, they had to get through uh, as much as possible. That's all I remember. And I found it. 23 years later. MTV's Fear is an American paranormal reality TV show that originally aired from 2000 to 2002 on MTV. It's considered to be the start of the paranormal television show genre, and it's crazy that no one knows what this show is, and it's kind of crazy that it even lasted that short of amount of time, because it's actually kind of awesome. The program follows a group of five or more contestants who are left at an alleged haunted location and led on a series of dares over two nights to explore the location and determine if it's actually haunted. The show was created by Martin Kunert and Eric Maines, who were inspired by the 1973 horror film The Legend of the Hell House. It's actually The Legend of Hell House. And it has no relation to Hell House LLC. Um, so I can't tell you whether or not to go watch it. But watch Hell House LLZ, that one's a good one. The series aired the first two episodes in a pilot run, which received outstanding reviews, and a full season was ordered. After eight more episodes, another season was ordered. The second season ended after only six aired episodes. The series was cancelled not because of a lack of interest, but because of the high cost of producing each episode. Which is insane to think about nowadays, because Netflix is a thing, and they pour millions and millions of dollars into these series. This would be such a cool thing to have now. So I don't really believe in the paranormal, but as a kid, I remember hearing a lot of second-hand stories about the haunted locations where we were living at. So this was just happened to be the location in which I remember watching this show the most. And maybe in a future episode I can go in great detail about all the scary stories that I've heard about the location that I lived at. But for now, we're just going to focus on the first pilot episode of MTV's Fear. The pilot episode uh, debuted... Uh, in the year 2000. On IMDb, there's not a clear definitive date on when uh, it was, but it just says 2000, so yay. The pilot episode takes place at the West Virginia State Penitentiary, which is a Gothic-style prison located in Moundsville, West Virginia. It operated from 1866 all the way to 1995, and is now primarily a tourist attraction. But it's also a filming hotspot for the likes of shows like Castle Rock and Mindhunter. So it's time to find out if this show truly deserved to be stuck in my mind for 23 years. The water was so far away. I was genuinely extremely excited when I watched this first pilot episode and the freaking intro of the song was Voodoo by Godsmack. I was like, dude, this totally fits the whole realm of the show. And I think there was a just a glimpse of that stuck in my stuck stuck in my mandula oblongata somewhere in my brain. Uh, but <laughs> we meet our brave ghost explorers in handheld interview format, which is really cool because it kind of looks like these are the audition tapes for the show. I think I'm going maybe in the woods, someplace a little spooky. Somewhere outside. They told me to dress warm. And if it is the audition tapes, it's genuinely a really cool way of showing the show's contestants. Contestant? Did I say contestants? Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that this show is actually a game show, but I'll talk more about that in a little bit. The contestants we have are graphic designer Steve, film student Ariana, bartender Derek, fashion student Lauren, choreographer Ryan, and witch Christina. Her sister was a witch! I know that I always talk about the love for Blair Witch, and I know that 
I said in the beginning that this was completely inspired by a different film in the 70s, but the vibe and aesthetic of this show is 100% based off of the Blair Witch Project. The text on screen, the no no charismatic host. It's something that you would see nowadays, some charismatic host talking about how the show works and everything, but I genuinely like that it's literally just these six people put in this penitentiary they're in charge of whatever they're doing and they have to follow some instructions but there's nobody telling them what to do they gotta read it and it's all text-based screen stuff it's like analog horror the ghost adventure rurs travel inside the prison and locate the safe house and they find a computer with instructions on what to do next they get some background of the area and then get told what to do. So remember when I said it was a game show? Well, I'm gonna explain that now. All of the participants have to go through specific paranormal hotspots throughout the entire prison. Once there, they must film their experiences for at least 15 minutes. If they complete both nights of the investigation, each member receives a $3,000 grand prize. At any time they can leave, but they must select another team member to fulfill the assignment that was given to them to get paid. Think phasmophobia but um, no, it's it, it's it's pretty much phasmophobia. The team on the first night consists of witch Christina, bartender Derek, film student Ariana, choreographer Ryan, and fashion student Lauren, with graphic designer Steve being the navigator back in the safe house, communicating with the team via a walkie-talkie. Jesus, this is phasmophobia. <laughs> Once they leave the safe house, Steve notifies the team that they have to select someone to go into the hole. The away team has 60 seconds to choose a person to go into the hole. Choose now. Which is a solitary confinement type punishment space for the prison. Bartender Derek goes all main character and chooses himself. I really like Derek um, at first. Then he kind of gets a little creepy at the end. Uh, but um, for, for now, Derek's pretty chill. I like Derek. And I also really like that he called Steve Buddy. <laughs> that makes my heart warm. Steve, this is Derek. I'm going in, so um, you're talking to me now, buddy. Fashion student Lauren is acting as the safety for Derek and then mistakenly calls him Steve. I'm not kidding. Good luck, Steve. That's not Steve. That's Derek. He calls people buddy. Steve, look at me. Lauren! It's, his name's not fucking Steve. He's such a nice guy that he even calms Lauren down, who's like freaking out, and he, and she's not even going in the hole. And she calls him Steve. <laughs> He's a nice guy. <laughs> Derek enters the hole while Steve reads the Wikipedia article about the hole. I think it's funny that like Steve's like saying all of this horrible shit about ha what happened to the hole, but he still has walkie-talkie etiquette. And it wouldn't be empty for days. Many inmates lost their sanity here. Over. Steve then tells choreographer Ryan to head to the infirmary while we get another exposition dump by Joel Dog Kaler, a convicted murderer. I think in the back part of it, they had some cells where they could lock people down. I looked up this guy. Uh, I couldn't find anything about him. So either he is um, an actor or uh, we just have so many murderers in this country that we don't remember a lot of them. In both situations, I'm kind of disappointed. Steve tries to riz up Ariana in literally the most 2000s way possible. Everything all right, Ariana? Everything cool with you? Over. Yeah. And sends her to the Alamo. The Alamo is a place that basically it was told that these people were... It's their last stand. It's where people were murdered, and it's where this guy named Red Snyder committed a whole bunch of murders, and everybody says, oh, there's no way that he could rest because he was such a horrible human being. That's nice. Send Ariana in there. Steve then gives more instructions to himself, Derek, on where to find the hole. Derek looks at where he's supposed to be and legitimately says, nope, and doesn't go in the hole. So I don't know if like the points are deducted or whatever. I don't know if he's going to be punished for that, but he does not enter the hole. I don't know if he did it on purpose or if he genuinely was confused, but I'm almost positive there's a point in time where he points the camera on where he's supposed to be and then he's just like, "Nope, I'm in the hole now. It's fine. Start the timer." I am now in the hole, guys. I am in the hole. Over. That's what she said. <laughs> the 15 minutes then begins. Steve Rick 
in the knot hole, Ariana in the murderer Red Snyder cell, and Ryan in the infirmary. After 15 minutes of pretty much nothing except for Ryan hearing some ceiling noises, everybody returns back to the safe house and begins the next task. Next up, we have the real Steve, witchy Christina, and fashion student Lauren to head up the dares in the south yard. Ryan takes charge as the navigator with Ariana back at the safe house. Steve heads to death row. Christina heads to the sugar shack. They talk about dismembering <laughs> in, in the sugar shack. And fashion student Lauren, who is with, who she thinks is Steve, uh, is outside, and they get spooked by a bat. Lauren's dare is to head inside the execution chamber and remove the tarp off of the electric chair. Derek has to stay back in the corridor as Lauren goes to complete her task. But at the same time, Christina starts freaking out because of her camera light going off. <laughs> Christina? Follow my voice, baby. You're okay. Prompting everyone to fail and go rescue her. No one gets their dares done, and they all go back to the safe house. At the end of night one, we see that Christina isn't up for the task and decides to leave in the morning. We are down to five ghostly goobles left for night two. It's honestly kind of interesting because I thought that we would see a little bit more of the witchy side of Christina. She did talk about once she gets into the sugar shack, she talks about how she sees like blood on the walls and there's like a crucifix and a pentagram and all this shit that's on the walls. And she says she's oddly calm and then she's juxtaposed to like 10 seconds later. Then she's like freaking out. She's hearing noises. She's feeling spirits all over the place and she yeets out of there. I actually, I feel okay in here. I'm quitting. Get someone now. My, 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 my liking this is going from Derek to Steve, not fake, fake Steve, real Steve fake is going from fake Steve to real Steve. Steve is, uh, kind of taking the reins as like this charismatic guy when he's going into the uh death row place he's like grabbing a cigarette and he's narrating what he's doing he's like hey guys this is all i see is this this is whatever a couple cells up and down here um i guess where these guys spent their time before and then like derek's back here calling lauren babe and baby and i'm like that's gross and i know at the time it probably wasn't that big of a deal but just hearing it now is just like super cringy right, okay you're good baby you're doing an awesome job just follow my voice we're doing great baby we're doing awesome Derek's taking a dump for me. What did he say? Hey, if you're liking this video, please give it a like and a thumbs up and subscribe. A like and a thumbs up are the same thing. Please subscribe. I need attention or I'll die. I'll explode. Because of Christina leaving, Ariana has to complete Christina's task of being in the sugar shack. While Derek, who can't stop calling his contestants friends Babe and Baby, and Lauren have to try to complete the electrocution chamber task once again. The 15 minutes start for Ariana while Lauren begins to trek down the hallway without Derek to complete the tarp task in the electrocution chamber. I think it's funny that like Derek has done a complete 180 on me. I use I liked them at first and then all of a sudden he kind of became an insufferable douchebag. I think he's going to redeem himself at the end of this, but he ends up start like he starts like singing to Lauren uh to keep her calm while she walks down the electrocution chamber. Uh but like he's not like he he, he sings you know what I mean? He sings. So, like, he's trying. Lauren sounds like she's starting to speak in tongues. I don't know what it is. I've listened to this part so many times, and it literally sounds like she's speaking in tongues. I don't know if it's, like, a religious thing. Spooky. <laughs> But ultimately, she cannot complete the task yet again. Because of this, Lauren decides that she is done, and she is the next person to leave. So we are down to four now. Ariana completes her tasks at the Sugar Shack, and they go back to the safe house, and the next task begins. While walking back to the safe house, Ariana talks about how she felt, like, really weird in the Sugar Shack, how she felt some evil essence in that place, and... By the looks of it, it looks like some crazy stuff went down in the Sugar Shack, which sounds like a Limp Bizkit album. <laughs> 
Steve and Ariana are the next navigators, while creepy babe Derek is the safety for Ryan, who's taken over Lauren's task to pull off the tarp of the electric chair. Derek calls Steve Buddy, he calls Lauren Babe and Baby, and he calls Ryan Brother. So... Make of that what you will. This is honestly the funniest part of this show. Ryan tries desperately to get into the execution room to pull off the tarp of the uh, chair, and he just has the worst time imaginable. All while Derek begins to rap to him, telling him that he's platinum, and he keeps calling him brother, and Steve is trying to tell (laughs) Ryan what to do. And it is just this amalgamation of noises that I'm sure would be overwhelming to anybody in that situation. Oh! I am not going in there! You can do it, brother! I can't, I can't do that! You're platinum, you're a rock star. You're pull that tarp off, buddy. Just close your eyes, don't even think about it. Just grab the tarp with one hand, turn your head away from it. After a while of hesitation, Ryan decides to pull the tarp, but he ends up pulling the chair off at the same time, which freaks him out way too much, and he just storms out of the place. Ryan is, like, hilariously overwhelming in this in this part of the show. But uh, he ends up going back, and uh, he ends up doing it. Ryan ends up pulling the tarp off of the electric chair, but then he has to stay in there for 15 minutes, which... He ends up doing, he conquered the worst part. So he ends up uh, completing Lauren's task. They all make it back to the safe house and await their next task. In this task, Steve and Ryan have to use paranormal equipment and go back into the sugar shack, which sounds like the Redux version of a Limp Bizkit album. Unlike the dares before this time, Steve and Ryan have to comb over the entire hotspot with paranormal ghost hunting equipment for 15 minutes. Ryan said that when he was in the infirmary, he heard footsteps above him, and then when Ryan was once again in the sugar shack, which Ariana was in, uh, they both confirmed that there were some really weird noises going on up in the ceiling uh, and... Who knows? This is also a really funny part, and I just didn't realize for the longest time, Steve looks exactly like Matt Reif, and I just didn't realize it, but he does. He looks exactly like Matt Reif. After the 15 minutes is up, Steve has to spend 10 minutes alone in the sugar shack while using the night vision goggles to investigate paranormal activity, and Ryan has to go back to the entrance. Steve is able to complete his dare, and both Ryan and Steve go back to the safe house. We then get confirmation that Derek knows that he broke the rules at the hole. And I don't know if his next task is just what he was supposed to do to begin with, or if this is punishment because he broke the rules. Regardless, Derek has to go back in the hole, sit in a chair, turn off all of his lights, and just listen to an EMF reader for 10 minutes. It's way too long in the dark in a place called The Hole. (laughs) This is definitely the most dramatic part of the show because Derek has a really tough time getting in there. He gets hyped up with all of his friends back at the safe house and Ryan even like, you're platinum, dude. (laughs) You're platinum. You're going to shine bright in there. You shine bright in the darkness. Platinum shines bright in the darkness. That I was platinum, that helped me straight through. You know what I'm saying? So you just know that you are platinum too. But overall, he gets way too scared and he goes back to the safe house where there was a little bit of a huddle. And Derek goes back to the hole. It was a really cool edit too, by the way, because it cuts from Derek being at the safe house and then it quick cuts to him standing in front of the hole, which I thought was hilarious and kind of a cool shot. It's a hole. It's a freaking hole. After a little more hesitation going back to the safe house and getting pumped up, Derek returns to the hole. The time starts, Derek sits on the chair and turns off all the lights and turns on the EMF reader. And like the wonderful human being that he is, he has comforted Lauren, he has comforted Christina, he has comforted Ryan, and now Derek must comfort himself by singing. The sun goes up tomorrow, 
After a very long out dramatic pause of them not able to reach Derek, they su he surprises them by showing up at the safe house after the 10 minutes. My boy did it. The investigation is over and the four of them both equally, what? And the four of them get the three grand each. And that is MTV's Fear. That's the first pilot episode. It was about an hour long. And honestly, when I first started it, I was like, mm, there's a reason why this thing isn't as popular or wasn't popular. But the more it went on, I'm like, I kind of dig it. Nothing really happened, but I think the whole point of the show was more about facing your fears than it was catching anything paranormal. And I'm sure a lot of people watched this pilot and they were like, oh my God, we could fake so much shit and then we would be millionaires. And they did that twice. Actually, they did that more than twice, but those are the big two. I, it, I'm going to be honest, MTV, if you ever bring this back, I would definitely love to be a part of it because I am not someone who's paranormal believer, but I'm not ruling it out either. But I would love to do something like this. I think it would be awesome. If you want me to cover more episodes of this show, please let me know in the comments below. And I hope you like this. And uh, please subscribe. My name is Isaiah. And uh, happy Halloween. Because this is definitely a late Halloween episode. Sorry.